In April of this year, a team of three paper airplane veterans absolutely smashed the world record for paper airplane distance, moving it from 226 feet to now 252 feet. So let's see that throw. Now there are three people we have to give credit to for this amazing record. There's Julian Chi who designed the original folding sequence for the paper airplane, Shin who actually modified the plane and improved its performance further, and Kim who threw the plane on that day. So congratulations to all of you, that was an incredible performance. The folding sequence for the final version of the world record paper airplane is unpublished. It is unknown to everyone who is not on the world record team, but it's with Julian's permission that I am teaching you today how to fold one of the prototypes for the world record paper airplane. And you can see the geometry for this plane is very, very similar to the world record plane. And presumably so is the folding sequence, but where it differs from the world record plane, I couldn't even tell you. So I'm very excited to share this with you, but I just want to make that disclaimer up front. But as I do, I have designed a template for this paper airplane. So if you head over to patreon.com slash foldable flight, you can download and print off this template there and fold a cooler looking paper airplane. So let's see some of Julian's test flights and I'm gonna teach you how to fold it. Yep. <laughs> no! oh my no! All you'll need in order to fold this paper airplane is an A4 sheet of paper, or if you have eight and a half by 11, you can just trim three quarters of an inch off the side. And with that, we're going to begin by folding this edge here to this edge. Once you do that, go ahead and open your paper up so that this is a mountain crease and fold your top edge in to the center to make a triangle. And you'll go ahead and do that on both sides. And now we're going to fold these triangles down, but we're not folding right along this edge you're going to want to leave a little gap. And what that means is you're gonna make a little short edge over here. And if you're using a full size of A4 paper, you want that short edge to be about the width of your finger. If you're using something smaller like a trimmed eight and a half by 11 paper, then go ahead and make that just a little bit shorter than your finger is wide. And your paper should look like this. And we're going to fold this top edge into the center again. Do the same thing on the other side. And your plane should look like this. We're now going to open those folds up all the way back into this orientation here. And you can see the points where these creases intersect the outer edges. And basically I'm going to fold between this point here and that point there, just kind of pulling this over like so. and creasing. And I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. Okay, and with the paper in this orientation, I'll fold along this existing crease down like so, and unfold, and all that did was place that crease on these layers here. And now I'll fold this point to this point here where the edge of these layers here are on the bottom, not this point there where the creases intersect. So you can see exactly where I'm placing it. And then I'm going to unfold this edge, unfold this and flip the paper over. And I'm going to actually rotate it into this position. 
And I'm going to do something that seems a little bit odd here. I'm going to fold right along this section of this crease here and just open the paper to this orientation. So again, you can see, and where this edge lands along the paper, you can either mark with your thumbnail right at this edge. You can see where I've placed that, or you can use a pin and I'm going to use a pin just for visibility on camera here. And that's going to give you this points equidistant from this line as that point is. So now I will fold right along this edge again and just mark right there to give myself a nice reference point. Okay, so now I'm going to flip the paper over and fold down on this crease. And that is one of my reference points for the next fold. The next one is a point up here where you can see two creases kind of intersect at the top edge. That's my other reference point and I am folding between this point down here where this little line intersects this edge and that intersection up there. So I like to start at this point. It's a little harder to locate in terms of the folding and head towards this point here because this crease will kind of help you place that top reference and you're just creasing all the way into that pocket. Once you do that, you can pull down on this crease here and you can see it kind of bubbles in that area and you just sweep the slack out of it like so to make it all lie nice and flat. And then we're going to actually open this along that kind of hinge that exists like so. And that is going to be a tab that works for us later. I'll go ahead and do the same things on the other side. So I'm creasing from this point here to the point where these two creases intersect at the top edge. Crease all the way into that pocket. And now I pull down on this side and flatten those bubbles out towards the front, just like so. And then I bend this whole tab back along its natural breaking point, right like that. Okay, now I'm going to actually completely unfold that all the way back out like this. And I'm going to fold the paper in half right along that existing center crease so all of these layers are on the outside. And I'm going to do something here that I'll explain in just a moment. So I'm folding this. And let me tell you exactly how I decided how to fold this. So I've taken this point right here and I'm landing it along an existing crease here. So that's the first thing that you wanna pay attention to. And the way I know how far back to fold it is there's a transition here between thinner layers and thicker layers. So it's going to kind of naturally catch as you're pulling it right there. And that's how far I'm going to fold it. So now I'll unfold that and I'm going to close these layers back up. And I want to pay attention to the point right where these creases I just made intersect the center. I'm going to fold right across them by pulling the nose down like this. Okay, and that's going to help us in a moment. So now I'm going to go ahead and kind of fold these in again, prepare my tabs, and fold my plane in half once more. And basically I want to inside reverse fold along this diagonal crease I have at the front. So I'm just kind of pushing the nose in, and you can see what that does. It's folding along both of these creases, and that nose goes inside the plane. Now I'm going to pull this layer back and there's kind of a natural breaking point right here along this crease at the front. And as I do that, I'm just using my left hand to kind of lay this flat. I'm not making any new crease there. And I can kind of collapse this side of the paper using existing creases. So I'm just kind of pulling this open and then pulling everything else down right like so. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm pulling this open, just holding it down with my right finger, pulling everything else down, and it should kind of naturally collapse into this position. Now, the thing is, we want these tabs we have on either side to actually tuck inside this layer. So as you collapse that, you want to wrap this around and you can even curl it if you want. However, it works best for you to get this layer behind that pocket that's going to lock everything together really nicely. 
and try to make sure everything lies nice and flat. Don't make any new creases as you do that. And you're going to do the same thing on this side, just wrapping this around behind and into this pocket. Okay, and your plane should look like this. Everything's nice and locked together and all we have to do is fold the wings. Now, you're going to be folding from right where this nose locks together at the front of the plane here to a little less than halfway up the back. You can actually experiment greatly with the width of the wings you make uh, and it will impact the flight characteristics of the plane. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's start with folding from this point here to a little below halfway. So maybe about there on the back. So you can see the crease that I made, something similar is gonna work great for you. You can experiment, as I said. But once you do one side, you need to make sure that your other wing matches the first. So lay it in this orientation here and fold, making sure that you land this corner here on the corner of your other wing. You can sweep any extra slack out of your wings, make sure they're nice and clean. And this is a finished world record prototype. It's an absolutely amazing paper airplane. When you throw it, if you find that it noses down at all, which I don't suspect that it will, but if you find that it's nosing down, you can bend the back edges up just a little bit in order to create some up elevator and that will help it to fly nice and level. If you find that it's turning left, you can bend the rudder slightly to the right, or if it's turning to the right, you can do the exact opposite. With all that said, thank you so much for watching this video and good luck flying your plane. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who are supporting this channel and making these videos possible. You can become the pilot of your favorite foldable flight paper airplane and your name will appear next to the paper airplane you choose in each of my YouTube videos. So head over to patreon.com foldableflight and join the foldable fleet today.